Welcome, Salar here. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I am here to do your New Moon and Virgo Tower Astrology reading. Um, so I want to welcome you here if you are returning. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you to those of you who are also um, heading in from my other channel, Solara Reads. Um, thank you for all of your support. Thank you for your likes, your shares, your comments, your subscribes, your donations, um, your booking me for services. I really do appreciate it all. Thank you guys. Um, if you're brand new here, welcome. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what tarot astrology is, tarot astrology is the reading of an astrological chart utilizing not only astrology, but also the power of the tarot, as well as um, numerology and certain channel messages that come through okay so I channel um, I channel the planets okay so um, let's get into this let's get into it I'm just gonna pull up the new moon in Virgo chart for those of you who are interested I use astroseek.com um, for general charts when I want to get things like uh, um, asteroids etc like um, those uh, um, those uh, placements and charts that are a little bit more obscure, then I will use, um, I think it's astro.com or it's also astrodienst, um, A-S-T-R-O-D-I-E-N-S-T.com. It's great for finding, um, finding out uh, those more obscure, um, you know, placements. So yes, let's get into it. Okay. So as I, um, I'm seeing here the moon is becoming new in Virgo on the 15th of September if you are you know in this part of the world or further east but if you are in the United States South America the moon will be becoming new um, sometime on Thursday evening the 14th of September okay so this is going to be, this is some interesting energy that we're dealing with here, okay? So the, the sun and the moon will be meeting in Virgo at 21 degrees. And this is very interesting because I only just pulled up this information like uh, today to really look at it. And maybe a few days ago, I glanced at it. And I find it to be very interesting because um, if you follow me over on Solara Speaks, um, did I say Solara Reads? I meant Solara Speaks. Solara Reads is my TikTok account, okay? For short, like Tara Reads. But anyway, um, 555 on my clock. Um, I was saying in one of my Solara Speaks readings recently that I kept on seeing 2121, and maybe this is why. Okay, so uh, for those of you who may not know, 21 degrees is, um, it is a degree of Sagittarius astrologically. Yes, but um, as far as the tarot is concerned, it is the world card. It is the world card. So um, this is speaking to me about this moon being a, a, a moon of, well, Virgo energy in general is about liberation of self. Um, it's about liberation of self and learning how to trust self and protecting one's own energy before we go out and begin to share it with other beings through the seventh house Libran energy, yeah. But um, Virgo energy is very concerned with you being able to feel liberated and being able to be protected in that, okay? So um, it's why it's connected to the nines in the tarot because of the hermit energy. So it's all about your ability to, to stand alone is really what it is and to recognize your power, your individual power and your ability to, to walk in that and to own it. Okay. But it's very interesting because I, I've been speaking about this energy. I want to say since the new moon in Leo and definitely when we were going through, um, that, uh, you know, Venus Kazemi, uh, state that ha that occurred and, you know, Venus going into the underworld, but also um, the energy of the sun conjuncting Regulus. I was speaking about the death of the, f the false legacies that have allowed the matrix to be what it has been. And indeed, um, if you ask me that the, the, the true beginning of that collapse 
began um, with the full moon in Aquarius back in 2021. Okay, because I, I believe that that was a full moon that was either directly on the 29 degree mark or like very close, but I want to say it was. And, and that begun the descent of these, uh, these false legacy energies that have run the matrix, therefore um, stealing our divine legacies really is what it is. So I've been speaking about this energy um, for the past you know, couple of weeks, and I didn't realize it was gonna show up so profoundly um, with the new moon energy, but I'm glad it has because and I've taken out some of the cards to, to you know to show you. Um, the sun and the moon are both going to be in Virgo. So this is the Hermit energy. I'm using the Modern Witch Tarot by Lisa Stroll for this reading. Okay, but the card that represents the 21 degree mark is the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, but what's really interesting about this is that um, because we're in the lower 20s. The Ten of Pentacles is represented, at the, the Ten of Pentacles represents rather the 20 to 29 degree mark. So there's some kind of beginning energy that is opening up here, but because it's Pentacles energy, it's being made real now on the earth plane. So there's been a lot of uh, talk in the spiritual community about um, the transference of certain uh, divine resources back to their rightful um, holders, which would be, you know, you and I, if you are in divine alignment, right? And there was what my guides were calling a grand transference that was occurring through Aquarius season earlier this year. And my um, inkling now is that what was opened up spiritually and energetically through that portal, through that door in Aquarius season is now making itself known on the earth plane. Okay, so um, I just did a reading on um, Solara Speaks where I spoke about how these energies that we're dealing with right now, it's getting harder for them to hide the truth. It's getting harder for them to hide, therefore, who you truly are. And um, this is a time of, this is a time when many things are going to become real. Many of the things that um, you've been experiencing, intuiting, um, you might even zero, 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 zero on my clock, it's midnight. It's, this is like the reset energy, right? This might be a time where you begin to notice people shift in the way they even begin to treat you. And it might not even be a conscious thing, but the shift is there. Because who you are cosmologically, as these energies ground into real time, can no longer be hidden. Okay, so the ones who were cloaking themselves in our glory, in our energy, pretending to be something they weren't in order to keep this you know, fucked up um, matrix system and all of its abusive templates alive, its narcissistic templates, um, those ones are descending and the true guardians of this earth are ascending and you're ascending into your rightful position, okay? So the 21, as I mentioned, is also the world card and if you've been rolling with me for a while, or even if you've come from my, like the channel I did originally, you will know that for me, the world card is not the end of a cycle. To me, the wheel of fortune is the end of a cycle. No, the world card is the end of an era. So with these, um, the sun and the moon at 21 degrees in um, Virgo, what we're seeing right now is the close of an era. We're seeing the close of the Ten of Pentacles energy in reverse. We're seeing the close of all of the, the, the so-called legacies that have created all of the deficits and the wounding and the harvesting that have kept those things alive and have benefited off of our pain. Those, um, those uh, you know, 
energies are dying. And I want to say energies because they, they represent themselves in different ways. They are dying in you on an individual level, allowing the truth of who you are to rise. Okay. Uh, the, the false, in other words, the false personas and all of the layers of those false personas that you had to hold on to or you held on to even unconsciously in order to be a part of this, uh, to feel accepted or to function in um, this matrix, that is crumbling within so that who you are cosmologically can rise. So the, the, the false versions um, that you created of self or that were projected onto you or condi you were conditioned or programmed or spell cast into, those false versions of self are crumbling so that your true cosmological self can rise and recognize, realize, understand, overstand that as it happens for you on a divine level, it happens for those also, once again, who have been cloaking themselves. So as... Um, at, this is the, the energy of the falseness being exposed. Of what was false must crumble. What was false and therefore cannot be sustained in this age of Aquarius, which is concerned with us walking in truth and owning our truth, walking in authenticity, those things cannot stand. So for you, the deceptive energy that kept you out of your power is dying in order for you to rise into your true power. For those other beings, the deceptive energies that kept them in power are dying so that the truth can finally be seen and dealt with, okay? So what this energy is also showing me, um, the two and the one, you can break it down as a two and a one also. It's also how I tend to read energy. And that would be the high priestess, right? That would be the high priestess and the magician. So what was what is this? This was my guides. They were showing me that um, the two and the one, this is all about the high priestess is all about the, the hidden things um, that are there, but we can't see unless we access it by way of our intuition. It's um, how we are able to see behind the veil. This is also indicating to me that um, what was hidden in terms of your magician energies is no longer, it's closing out. And when I say your magician energies, I'm talking about the fullness of your resources, the fullness of who you are as a spiritual being, as well as a physical being, or your cosmological truth, as well as all of the gifts, the talents, um, the, the things you've been given on this journey divinely in order to not survive but thrive, um, what has been hidden or kept you out of those things is dissipating now. This is what this new moon in Virgo is facilitating. It's facilitating this newness of energy that allows for literally um, these old structures to die so that the true guardians can be not even reborn. You've already been reborn, so you can rise now. It's time for you to rise and shine, okay? Um, so bear with me a second while I see if there are any more messages coming through. So it's interesting because, um, you know, whenever you have the new moon energy, it's when the moon is at its, you know, its darkest. Um, but it's also there to, it's when a seed is being planted. So an, the new moon energies don't necessarily uh, always come into fruition until six months later, you know, when the moon becomes full in the same sign or even a year later, when the sun returns to the sign, but it begins the process. So what does this mean? It means that what is being, what is materially coming forth, this energy is now opening the door for the material to come forth. It doesn't mean, I want to be very, very real with this. It doesn't mean as soon as the moon becomes new in Virgo that all of a sudden 
things become exposed. What it means is that the energy is moving to facilitate this in real time. And by the time we reach Pisces season, and the moon reaches its fullness, we have the full moon in Virgo, then there's going to be some kind of, um, it probably will have presented itself materially by then, but it would have become a lot more established by next Virgo season. But what this new moon sets off is every lunar cycle moving forward in Virgo every month is going to facilitate facilitate this energy growing and becoming real, if that makes sense. So, um, there is a illumination, there's an illumination coming forth of the end of the world as we know it with this world card, but there's also, um, this, it's like simultaneously the seeds for a new world are, are being planted through this energy. And it's almost like um, there's an inter, 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 interweaving of the beginning and the end, almost like the planting of the seeds of this new era are also what put an end to the old. Um, so what we've been going through the past couple of years is like a demolition process is really what it is and that doesn't mean that the demolition process is over but for many of you the the worst parts of the demolition are over because we're all working in accordance with with where we are on our own ascension journey so the demolition is here to facilitate all of us in tearing down the false structures within. So in other words, the more you've done that already on your path, the more you're benefiting from these energies and people who are just coming in, they're beginning that process. Um, and so they might still be going through the more difficult parts of, of pulling those structures down, but because you've gone ahead and done it for them, they probably will move through that energy with, with more speed. Um, this is what we are doing when we go ahead, we go forward and we do these things. We are opening the doorway for others to access um, this caliber of healing and to do it faster. Okay, so um, is there anything else we're going through with this? Yeah, the Ten, also, the Ten of Pentacles, not for nothing, is the, as I talk about the interweaving of beginning and end, that's what the Ten is ultimately about. It's binary. As I say that, it's zero, zero, 0010 on my clock. Hope you can see. Zero, zero, 0010. So funny. Um, so the Ten is binary. It's about the beginning and the end. It's about the code of creation. It's really what it's about. Um, what we what we do in, in computers mimics that, right? So um, this is further uh, cementing that this new moon in Virgo is is bringing is bringing in the new world. It's bringing in the new world by way of our ability to connect with fully liberating ourselves, because that's what Virgo energy is here to do. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. This is also a time where many of you are going to start to feel more at home in the world. Okay, so for many of you, um, because of the nature of the matrix and who you are as high frequency beings. Um, you've never felt at home here because of, of the way things were structured. You never felt okay being yourself. Um, and this new moon is also facilitating that ability to feel comfortable being who you are in the world and to feel like this world is your home. I feel like there's a lot of um, clearing that's happening on a geographic level also through this new moon in Virgo. Um, and when I say that, like I was speaking about this in Solara, on my channel Solara Speaks in the last reading I did about how the foundation of these old timelines have now collapsed. So um, what I mean when I say that is that a lot of the contracts 
karmic contracts were, uh, you know, especially those of you who were contracted to certain families um, and your generational curse breakers, you know, um, those contracts expired back in 2022. That was the year of contracts, right? Um, those contracts expired full moon in Capricorn 2022. And what we've been experiencing since then is, um, is materially aligning with, with doing the work we have to do in order to extricate ourselves entirely from those energies on every plane, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, okay? Now, while we're doing that and we're healing, the timelines that supported those energies have been falling, they've been collapsing. And as those timelines collapsed and they fell and they became, um, and we weren't picking them up again, now what has occurred from what my guides are showing me is that the actual bedrock or the foundation upon which those timelines existed, the foundational root energies have also been um, upended. So they're no longer in there. And it's happening through this, this retrograde um, season also through this retrograde period. Okay. So it's almost like if you want to think about it, because I know this is very um, abstract. Okay. So if you want to think about it, like the, the demolition process of a building, and I don't know much about demolishing a building, you can almost uh, see like the end of the contracts being, you know, uh, uh, speaking to the, the ones who are in charge of, of, of um, the land and all of those legal arrangements, you go to them and you agree that a building is going to come down for a new one to happen now. Just because you've agreed with them doesn't mean that the demolition process has started, but it means that you have agreed with um, with these you know, groups, whoever it is that you're working with, you've agreed that it's time for the building to come down in order to, to build something else, okay? So that contract is signed. That's kind of what occurred with the closing of the karmic contracts. And then the demolition process cannot begin until the building is cleared and evacuated. So you got to go through that process, right? And then, um, you know, other arrangements have to be made before you bring in the wrecking ball, okay? And so then you bring in the wrecking ball and you just you just bring the building down, right? But then you gotta to begin to clear the energies. Um, you gotta begin, not the energies, you gotta to begin to get to the, the foundation of the building and make sure that it's properly, you know, you've been, been removed, I would imagine. So there's that aspect also and meanwhile while you're doing that you're clearing away all of the energy all of the rubble from also the demolition work in other words there's a whole bunch of stages of demolition and cleaning up that you have to go to before you get to the foundational energies that have to be looked at in order for the new building to be built that's kind of what we've been going through which is why everything has been so chaotic and so now for many of you it's time to build. It's time to get in the surveyors, whoever it is, the architects, whoever it is you're working with and begin to lay the plans now to erect the new building. And yes, there's still cleanup to go along the way. And yes, the erection of the new building means that, um, means that there are still, you know, uh, hiccups along the way. There are still even things you have to consider about the original building that was there in terms of building this new structure. All of that has to be taken into account, right? But, but you're not where you were when you first signed the contract that it's time to demolish the building. I hope that makes sense because I know when I'm talking about collapsing timelines, removing foundations, closing contracts, it can sound, like I said, it can be really abstract. So I hope that brings some, um, like, uh, some, what's the word, like cohesion to, to what it is I'm speaking. Okay. So I think that's all I have to say about the sun and the moon at 21 degrees, we might come back to it a little bit more. Excuse me while I take a sip from my um, sip of tea, from my handleless favorite mug. <laughs> um, Mercury is getting ready when 
a few hours after this new moon, she is getting ready to station now to go direct, having been, I think, for 19 days in a retrograde period. In fact, let's see, let me see if I can pull up when that happens. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. Yeah, so about seven hours. Let's go back now. So about seven hours after the moon is new, Mercury stations to go direct. Now what's really interesting about Mercury stationing to go direct is that the degree that Mercury, did I just, one second guys, I'm sorry, give me just one second because I foolishly didn't see what degree Mercury will be at when. Okay, so it is still the eight degree mark, okay. Oh, good. I didn't know if Mercury had pulled into seven degrees when stationing to go direct. Um, but it is, it's, she's going to literally be right at that eight degree moving into the seven degree energy. If, you know, like a couple of minutes longer, um, it would have been seven degrees um, Mercury. But why is this important? Because we just had the full moon in Pisces at seven degrees Pisces and seven degrees Virgo, seven, seven. So there's something from that full moon that as we reach the new moon, Mercury is still speaking to us about. Mercury is still wanting us to reflect upon because Mercury will still be in retrograde. And Mercury, as far as I'm concerned, is where we get our divine instructions. It, it is how spirit speaks to us. So it's how we learn. Um, we learn about the energies that are occurring. That's how I, Mercury is the communicator of this, right? Um, so there's something that Mercury is wanting to touch on at this eight degree mark that has to do with the full moon in Pisces that just occurred about two weeks ago. There's something that Mercury is wanting us to remember or to hold on to or to reflect upon or to establish as we, we as, uh, as she stations now to go direct and as we move through these new moon energies. So this Mercury, Mercury is uh, represented by the magician in the tarot. And of course, Mercury is the planet that rules both Gemini and Virgo. And so um, Mercury is saying a lot. So if we look at the... Um, the energies we have here. We have Mercury with the Magician, we have the Hermit with Virgo, and then we have the Eight of Pentacles. But we also have the Strength card because the Eight, of course, in Tarot is connected to the Strength card, which immediately I'm seeing Eight, Eight Energy, Eight, Eight Portal. So not only is Mercury speaking about something to do with the full moon in Pisces, but also there's some kind of um, establishment of something that occurred in the Eight, Eight Portal that's about to go forth. And if you've been rolling with me for a minute, you know that my... Um, the way I view the 8-8 portal is that the 8-8 portal is here for us to connect with our divine resources for the year ahead. So there's something here with Mercury at 8 degrees going retrograde. I feel like what I really feel like is happening is the, there is an allotment being made energetically for the repayment retroactively of what was lost. Okay, now I want to be very careful when I say that because once again, these are the energies that are setting the tones for what will come. This is what is being made possible. 
through these energies for what was taken from you, um, 0022, throughout these eight, eight portals where you, when you didn't know who you are, you know, there's something 0022, I'm sorry, 22 two is to do with contracts. Again, it's Capricorn energy. Um, there's something here about Mercury providing some kind of energy window to begin to open what was lost in the old world to you through these portals, through the thievery, through the energy harvesting, to, to come forth to you now retroactively. I hope that makes sense. Now with the eight degree mark, that does speak about, you know, energy and contracts also. Um, it also speaks about the energy, about it being something that has to be pushed through. Okay, so this is going to be, this might be a bit of a tough energy when Mercury, um, through the Mercury energy. I wonder how that might express itself in our real life. I already feel like um, this new moon energy is going to challenge our own personal value. And what I mean by that is that Jupiter just began to retrograde through Taurus. And right now is retrograding at the six of pentacles energy at 15 degrees. So this is also 15 is the energy of the devil, which is again to do with your, your material contracts or contracts that have bound you out of your divine truth in the matrix due to how they were brokered is really what it comes down to. So I really do feel like this new moon is going to challenge once again, our own personal value. But why would that be? Well, because this time around, because it's opening you up to be able to connect with the fullness of your truth, if you are not able to accept who you are truthfully, accept your power, then this is where conflict and resistance comes in the receiving of it. And this is where a lot of the energy that's been coming up recently for me, um, even outside of Leo season, has been about clearing heart chakra blocks. Because um, with those emotional densities that create heart chakra blocks, those are the things that block us off from our truth. Those are the things that block us off from therefore receiving everything that we deserve. Okay, this is why the Libra energy challenges us to, it, it's the energy of Ma'at, is where we weigh our heart against a feather. Is our heart lighter than the feather? And the feather represents our thoughts. The feather represents mental energy. Is your heart, are you divinely aligned with your truth, which means you're connected to your heart, or are you still lost in the mental energies that really, you know, especially the mental energies of the matrix that were ultimately designed for your self-destruction at every turn? Have you broken all contracts with those mental energies that cause you to think things about yourself that take you out of alliance with your heart and therefore bring heaviness and density into your fields? Okay, because that's going to be a really important part of receiving your value of being able to get back what it is that was taken from you. In other words, the example they're giving me is like, um, if you take someone who has lived, you know, like a really simple life and they've struggled, you know, they've struggled their whole lives, especially, you know, financially, they've never really lived in a situation where they've been privileged or where they've had luxury. You take that person and you tell them all of a sudden, oh, there was a mistake. You actually are, you know, a king or you actually are a queen and you're supposed to be living in this place and yada 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 like 
that person is going to resist that information. Even if it's everything that they thought they wanted, they're going to resist it. They're going to face resistance once they enter into that new life because it's so different from what they've known. It's so different from what the stories they've been told about themselves. How do you go like from, you know, these stories that talk about going from a pauper to a prince? How do you do that in real time? You know, and, and energetically, that's what some of you will be dealing with. You know, the energetic block that to your own belief in who you are cosmologically. And it's your belief in who you are. It's your faith in who you are. It's your knowing in who you are cosmologically and living in that truth that gives you the access to what it is that wants to come forth retroactively, if that makes sense. So this energy is opening even vaster doors for us to begin to do the healing, not to begin, to continue to do the healing as we rise into, rise back into um, our, you know, our rightful positions of honor, we must now acclimate ourselves to live from that state and to receive okay so that's really what I'm getting with this mercury energy um, it is in the eight of pentacles this is about the work that is being um, you know this is about sowing in order to reap this is about uh, the strategy and what needs to go into the work but this is also about pushing past when you think about it like the eight in tarot, again, is the strength card. It's the energy. It, when you meet an eight in tarot, whether it's, you know, the eight of wands, um, eight of swords, eight of cups, eight of pentacles, like we have now, it speaks of an energy where you are being presented with the option to move into something that's going to liberate you, which would be all the nines. But you, it requires... Um, it requires bravery and courage that can only be accessed by way of following your heart. This is the strength card energy. You get what I'm saying? So when you get to the eight of pentacles, where you're trying to go to is the nine and the ten of pentacles. And the nine of pentacles in the tarot is about, um, you know, recuperating your sense of value. It's knowing who you are and living from that place of value. It's knowing that you don't need luxury. You are luxury. And when you are luxury, luxury will follow you. And when I say luxury, I'm not talking about matrix ideas of luxury. Luxury speaks of light. Lux. You get what I'm saying? Um, I'm speaking about what brings like lavishness and beauty to your truth and your reality. And for all of us, it's going to be different. That's living luxuriously, right? So um, the, the eight of pentacles, the barrier that comes up in order for you to get to the nine of pentacles is all to do with your ability to feed the energy of knowing who, who you are in your own value until it becomes established in you. So this is really what we're dealing with here. This is what Mercury will be helping us to, um, to work through right now, like uh, just through this energy of the new moon. But even as we move forward, um, Mercury setting the stage for every, like I said, every moon cycle when the moon enters in Virgo, we're going to have another up level or another, I should say, another opportunity to utilize and connect the energies of the moon in Virgo that are there to help you elevate um, in your value. Okay, so speaking of value, we do have Venus who has been out of retrograde now for about a, a week. And um, the last time <clears throat> we met, you know, when I did the full moon in Pisces, she was still retrograding. And now she's no longer retrograding and she's moving forward. It's time for her to move forward. Okay, so she's taken us through, um, she's taken us through Leo. She's helped us to see and to, um, 
you know, begin to take accountability for all of the ways that we, we downplay our own light due to childhood wounding and how the downplaying of our own light is what has also kept us out of living lives that are beautiful and feel good. Because like I said to you in previous readings, like Venus feels you have a right to beauty. She feels you have a right to living beautifully, to living, um, you know, um, in states of joy, living luxuriously. Venus feels you have a right. Okay. So if Venus feels you have a right and you're, and you, you are not in alignment with that truth. Well, how did that happen? Well, that was through all of the ways you were programmed out of your value and you were programmed to dim your own light and to not follow, um, not to follow your heart. And that occurs in childhood because that is integral to keeping the matrix alive is wounding us as children because the matrix is run off of wounded child energy. There is no commercial commercialism, the three C's, commercialism, capitalism, consumerism. It doesn't exist with people who are living their truth, following their hearts and whole. You must be a fragmented being living in lack, constantly looking outside of yourself for answers for those three C's to thrive. So from childhood, we are, we are wounded in order to perpetuate, 0033 on my clock as I say that, in order to perpetuate and keep alive these wounded child energies. And every decision that we make in our woundedness in adulthood is from that programming. Unconsciously, maybe so, but it still is that. Yes, so Venus has been helping us to undo, Venus and Mars and Lilith, you know, they've been helping us to undo those programs and spells that took us out of our, our worth and took us out of our our, um, you know, joy, robbed us of our joy and our vitality and our life force, um, you know, uh, st uh, uh, stole our ability to, to really connect with our own solar plexus and, and, and our own true personal will for self. Because many of us, the majority of us, were running around thinking that we were living lives, making decisions from a place of our own personal will when really it was all manipulation because we weren't really even ourselves. So Venus has been helping us to undo those programs so that we can connect, we can reconnect with our ability to choose um, things that feed our soul, feed our light bring beauty back into our life. And Venus has been helping us to feel and to realize and to know that we are worthy of that. We are worthy of living beautifully. And so Venus now moving forward is bringing those lessons um, while Mercury is at that eight degree mark also um, challenging us to step into the full receipt of our value and our power, Venus is also having um, taken us back, helping us now to move forward. And she's at 14 degrees. And 14 degrees is a degree of Taurus. So again, it has to do with your personal energy and your divine resources. Okay, so your Taurus energy, your Taurus energy field is really all that you are and all that you bring to the earth planes. Okay, so Venus is helping us to connect with that. The 14 degrees is a degree astrologically of Sagittarius, sorry, what am I saying? Astrologically, it's a degree of Taurus. In tarot, 14 is a degree of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius energy, the temperance card, is all about well, it's about bringing something into balance. It's about the tempering of something in order to bring things into balance. But the Sagittarian energy is where we begin to live truthfully. And I like to tell people, it's the energy where we begin to live truthfully, even if uh, we have no material, um, material proof yet of our power. Sagittarius is where we learn to walk by faith in order to move ahead. 
Eight of Wands. Yes? So that's beautiful energy that, that Venus is adding to support Mercury as Mercury gets ready to station, direct, and help us to move forward through that Virgo energy of rising up in our value. Meeting our Ten of Pentacles, our Nine and Ten of Pet our Nine and Ten of Pentacles status. Okay, so we have Mars, and I'm loving this energy. Whoo! I'm loving. I love Mars energy, but I'm loving this energy because Mars is um, in Libra, is in its sister sign. And as I say that, I'm hearing that Michael Jackson song. You want to be starting something. You know, because that the Mars energy, um, the, sorry, the uh, Libra energy is cardinal. This is all about, we're about to start something. And as we move into Libra season, that's what it's about. Every time we move into the cardinal signs, we start in something. We start in a new cycle. But this Mars energy is not just, we're starting something, la, 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 la. No, the Mars energy is challenging. It's like, we want to be starting something, right? Um but it's very interesting because we got Mars in Libra at 11 degrees. Mars in Libra at 11 degrees. So for one thing, we have a little bit of the mirroring of what is happening in the nodes in the sense that we've got the Libra and the um, Libra Aries energy working together. Not that Mars is Aries, but it is its ruler. So we have that kind of, um, you know, syncretism, you could say. But Mars in the tarot is the tower. It is the tower. Okay. And then we have the justice card. The justice card. And then we also have the three of swords. Okay. Um, which is the, the 11 degrees. Yeah. It's 11 degrees Libra. And not for nothing. 11 is a master number. Okay, and 11 is, astrologically speaking, Aquarius energy. So something big is happening here with the Mars, with this Mars energy as the, the new moon is here to eradicate these fake legacies in order for the true ones to rise. So what's happening here is that there's a fight for justice that Mars is not initiating, implementing, energetically speaking implementing and what is the war being waged against well it's the three of swords energy so what has that got to do with anything well if for those of you who are coming um to this channel from solara speaks you might know i did a reading um not a reading i did a teaching i guess you could say like a week and a half ago where i went through the entirety of the sword suit and i showed you um very loosely how the matrix uses our own thoughts against us to cause us to self-destruct. Okay, so this is all about the undoing of mind control. It's really what it's about. This is what this Mars and Libra at 11 degrees energy, it is undoing the mind control or any or anything that would block the free thinking that the age of Aquarius not desires, but requires, okay? It is an age where free thinking, true free thinking will rise again. We have lived in a time where we've been told that we are free thinkers, critical thinkers, that we have the right to all of these things. And every time that we've moved out of the box of what is acceptable in accordance with the paradigm set by the matrix, people have dealt with all manner of disciplining, right? Um, whether, you know, recently shadow banning on, on, on social media or whether it is like, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, um, being ostracized socially or from certain groups. So how can you be a free thinker if there are limitations placed upon what you express? right? Um, and this Mars energy, it feels like that's what it's fighting for. But it's fighting for, it's fighting for that by demolishing the energies that have prevented that so far. And so when we meet a three in tarot, it's all about how things begin to be birthed. 
because we're working with Empress energy, how things begin to take material form, how the energy has gained such momentum that it's able to come forth. This is what Mars will be fighting against through this energy. The what, um, how these energies were birthed. A lot of how these this mind control energy has been birthed. Okay, so um, we've we've all been under mind control. It's just to what degree? To what degree? And with this three energy, it's really speaking about also all of the ways that other energies have interfered into our mental realities without our conscious consent or awareness. All the way external energies have trespassed into our mental realities without our conscious consent or our conscious awareness. Now take that how it resonates for you, but it works on so many different levels, right? So this is what that Mars energy is, is railing against in order to continue to set the tone and lay the foundation for this new age where free thinking, true free thinking, not fake free thinking, true free thinking, because remember, this energy is bringing an end to the fakeness that the old, um, the fakeness and the replica energy and the inversion energies that the matrix um, was upheld through and um, through which the old world and the previous age flourished. It's all, it's all coming down. It's all coming down. And so we have, um, we have some kind of, this is a big, a big shift that Mars is assisting in. Even if it's not the main shift that you're, that you're going to be feeling on the day or any, it doesn't matter. Energetically, you need to know this is a big shift that Mars is helping with because of that master degree also. That master degree. I just heard even that many of the masters, 0044 on my clock as I say this, many of the masters, those who have been sent to be teachers to help break the collective free, it's like this Mars energy is railing against the injustice of, of them being silenced also. There'll be no more of that. There'll be no more of that moving forward. Okay, so not for nothing, since we're talking about mastery, we've also got Uranus retrograding through Taurus at 22 degrees. There are two master degrees that are occurring in the chart as the moon moves into Virgo and the sun and Virgo are at the 21 degree, the world card, end of an age, energy, Ten of Pentacles, the collapse of false legacies. We have two master degrees happening. We've got a master degree of Taurus, which is all about your energy field. And we've got a master degree of Libra, which is about, once again, the ability for heart and mind to come back together in unity. You see, for as long as they were running their mind control programs on us, they were keeping us in schisms within self because in order for their mind control programs to work, they had to fragment us. That's what all the childhood wounding was about. So the Libra energy is concerned with justice and balance, but on an internal and a soul level, the Libra energy is concerned with the marriage of mind and heart, which is only, is only um, possible when you're, you're, you're free, your mental energy is free when you're not being controlled. And when I speak about being controlled, I'm talking about even those commands within your own mental energy that you have grabbed a hold on, thinking, hold of thinking that they are your, your thoughts. They are, you know, part of your mental energy when they weren't. That also blocks the ability for the for the the um, for the mind heart unity to come, the inner union of those energies to come. Because if you're running around thinking things about yourself, 
that isn't true based upon what other beings have told you or projected upon you or conditioned you into, you're not in your truth. You're not in your power. So therefore, you're not able to follow your heart and access your joy. And that is a prerequisite to freeing your mind. Hope I'm making sense. So with Uranus retrograding, Uranus, one of the, 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 the star planets of the age, Saturn and Uranus. And what is Uranus here to do? Uranus is here to take us forward. Uranus is here to help us to um, evolve. Uranus is here to help us be innovative and, and to connect with our freshness and our truth. So Uranus is at the 22 degree mark of Taurus, seven of pentacles, undoing the stayed energies that kept us out of our value and unable to truly connect with our divine resources and therefore our multidimensional and infinite capabilities. Uranus is concerned with your ability to utilize the power of those energies. It's why it's connected to technology. So it's about uh, regaining the mastery. This is what this energy, um, this new moon is about too. Regaining mastery. Those of you who are masters, whether you consider yourself to be ascended masters or whether you've just mastered certain things that you're here to bring, to this ascension, bring to this new earth. These are the energies that are supporting your rise. These are the energies that are taking, removing the gag orders that have been placed upon you in order to keep you quiet. And not for nothing, that gag order energy is mental energy too. It's what the Mars energy is fighting against, the Three of Swords. This is mental energy. Not for nothing, look at this card. Is it not about the swords in the heart? Is it not about the ways that you are mind fucked out of your ability to connect with your heart? Is it not about the, 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 the state of constantly being heartbroken in order to keep you out of the ability to connect with, um, with joy? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. There was something else I wanted to touch on. Oh yeah, so Jupiter just began its retrograde period and it's, it's not stationing to go direct until um, December 31st. So all the way up until the end of the year, we will be dealing with these energies and when it goes uh when it goes it stations to go direct it will only be at five degrees Taurus. So we are going through back um we are backtracking through um six of pentacles and five of pentacles energy but this is to do with the wheel of fortune. This is Jupiter. This is all about um the expansion energies. This is all about what allows us to live truthfully. That's what the Jupiter energy is, as I mentioned it, expressed through Sagittarius also. That's how it expresses itself. The Jupiter energy is connected to our faith and therefore our belief in our power. And there's something here about it's, it, uh, you know, where things have been imbalanced. Um, Jupiter is here to, to, to put that right also. It's all to do with the undoing of lack of consciousness, the limitations placed upon us and the limitations we've placed upon ourselves by believing this shit that have kept us in lack. This is what the Jupiter retrograde is helping to undo also. Yes, um, I'm not going to go too much into these energies like these, uh, you know, these slower moving planets. I already did kind of talk about them. The next planet that will be um, moving to go direct, I think, after Mercury will be Pluto in October, which will be very interesting. I think Pluto has been retrograding since sometime in June. Okay, so um, maybe Cancer season, maybe Gemini season. I don't really remember at this point, but Pluto going um, direct 
is going to also help to uh, help with the reconstruction of, the, of new material contracts because it will be in Capricorn. It will be in Capricorn and Capricorn energy is to do with material contracts. And funnily enough, as I say that the 28 degree mark, that is a degree of cancer. You know, so this is all about the resurrection of the Divine Mother and the Divine Feminine and living in ways contractually with the earth that honor her seasons, honor her cycles, honor her, her, um, her godhood again. Because you see, the matrix contracts, the material contracts of the matrix, the way the reason it's connected to the devil is because they were designed to bind us out of out of the garden, out of the lovers, out of inner union with self, out of our ability to live beautifully and live lavishly, live luxuriously. Um, everything in the matrix was designed to bind us out of that and only to allow certain individuals into a false sense of that through sacrifice. And so because of that, um, the, the Capricorn energy, the devil, is all about those bind, the binding contracts that keep us out of truth. And they are all based upon these matrix tricks that that cause us to then become addicted also that's why we have addictions and obsessions because we're so focused looking for um we're really looking for the lovers is what we're looking for but we're looking for it in all the wrong places and this is where we get fucked and we get stuck in there or we would get stuck in there their reincarnation cycles because we would die in that place. That's what the Bible is talking about when it says dying in your sin. Sin, as I've said before, is about being out of divine alignment with your truth, with who source says you are. It's with being completely out of alignment with your Aries energy or your ascendant, your crowning energy. And therefore all of the other supporting energies, right? So um, when you die in that state, of not knowing who you are, then you are, then you come back here again. You haven't been able to ascend out of the lie. It's almost like they're, they're, they're taking me back to this pauper prince idea. If, if a person is a pauper their whole life, but they're truly a prince, but they die a pauper not knowing they're a prince, do they get an inheritance? Or do their descendants get that inheritance? Probably not. And this is taking me to the North Node energy and speaking about how dying in, in sin is, is uh, dying without reclaiming your crown, your crown of glory, your crown of truth, your Aries energy. And this is where we are. This is what we're doing right now. We're reclaiming our, and this is what the nodes are here to do too. North Node in, in Aries, South Node in Libra dealing with all of the injustices that have stolen our crown. And the Aries energy is helping us to get it back. You see, everything here is supporting our rise. That's the truth. Planetarily, like the universe has your back. Everything is supporting our rise. But we got to, we've got to do the work of aligning with these energies. So we still got Lilith, 27 degrees Leo, still supporting us, telling us nobody puts baby in the corner. Get out of corner living. <laughs> it's time for you to expand, damn it. It's time. It's time. And the 27 degree Leo, that's a degree of Gemini. That's a message. Lilith is shouting out to us loud and clearly before she moves to the 28 and the 29 degree mark and then begins to, to make her way through Virgo, where I really believe she's going to kick up a fuss also on our behalf so that we rise into our value, so that we truly liberate ourselves from all of the fuckery that's kept us out. But yeah, I just want to see if there's anything else. 
that I want to touch on before I go. This is a moon of self-liberation. But you must align yourself with that energy. There's no more thinking small. There's no more thinking small. And there's no more subscribing to any kind of energy that wants to victimize you, including your own ego. That's the truth. That is the truth. So I hope that this reading was helpful and insightful. Um, I hope that it's opened your eyes to, to what is actually happening energetically. It's very exciting. Um, I hope it's helped you to, to recognize and realize how supported you actually are. I know as we're going through this stuff, it feels like sometimes, especially because so many of us have had to be in hermit mode, um, as all of this stuff happens, you know, it can really make you feel lonely or as if you're alone or as if you're going crazy or as if the stuff will never happen. You know, the, there's a myriad of lies that, that want to pervade our, our mental reality and to put us in states of discouragement. But I hope that this uh, reading and this breakdown has helped you to see how even, not even, but the planets are supporting your rise. They're supporting your rise. They're cheering you on with a whole bunch of other invisible witnesses and supporters. Um, and they, and you know, they knew you were going to make it, but they still can't believe you made it. You know what I mean? Like, because that's how amazing you are. And that's how powerful you are. And that's how amazing it is what you've done. So give yourself some props and pat yourself on the back. You know, this kind of ascension has never really been, been, been done before on this planet. We, and, you know, that's a whole other conversation, but it hasn't. So yes, yes, yes. Be proud of yourselves and, and rise back into your glory. It's time. It's time. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. If you would like to know more about me or my services or you would like to work with me, uh, feel free to check out my website. It's solara with an H dot info. I do always uh, leave that information, the information for my website and my emails in the description box below. Um, so please note that um, when you are booking a service with me, my website is there as a menu, but in order to book with me, you need to either go through my contact me page or email me separately through one of the email addresses um, supplied in the description box. If you would like to sew into the channel and you would like to donate, um, I always will appreciate, I appreciate your generosity and um, your love and your gestures, and you can do so through the PayPal link also in the description box below. But this is where I'm going to get going for real. So I wish you guys all a beautiful, beautiful new moon in Virgo. I'm sending you love, joy, peace, um, like celebratory vibes, and um, yeah. Focus on clarity, 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 um, clarity and the ability to really tune in to who you are. May you be able to tune in to who you are on every plane. May you spiritually con connect. May your thoughts align. May your feelings and your heart and your emotions expand in kind. And may you begin to see in real time um, everything begin to roll out for you on earth as it's already been written in the heavens. It's zero one, zero one on my clock binary. I think that's the perfect time to end. I'll see you guys soon. Until next time, be well. Mwah.